Will for the... <laughs> it works? No, nope, doesn't work. Because I can speak louder. No. <laughs> All right, so uh, as I told you, uh, the wolves now are in, uh, in Canada and uh, they're happy if you like the performance. Um, but I'm here to answer your questions, so feel, please feel free. Uh, all the questions are good. We uh, raised the first group of 15 in uh, 2009 in order for them to be ready in 2012. Uh, then we raised another 10 uh, the following year to have uh, uh, younger, uh, younger adults. And then uh, we had uh, six little ones uh, that were born in 2012. And uh, all the wolves in the world are, are born at the end of March uh, or early April. So we had to wait and sometimes uh, interrupt the shooting uh, to let our wolves grow. And the little wolf you see is, is the same because we picked one that was the best, uh, best young actor. Uh, he, he was born uh, the color of my shoes, very dark, like all his brothers, and uh, day after day he became lighter in color, and he ended up being a white wolf, and he was the only one to be white, and we had no double, so the one you see, is, his name is Ciso, um, uh, was the, the, the young star, and we had no double, so sometimes in order to make his day of shooting short enough, we didn't want to tire him, uh, we had to interrupt our days. Uh, we wouldn't work uh, with him more than three hours a day uh, as we would do for with young children. But, but the, the wolf that has uh, the main role, so to speak, uh, is actually an individual wolf. It's the yes, same individual yes. wolf for all of them. That wolf uh, called Cloudy was the, the king. He was the uh, alpha male. Um, he was dominant male. Um, and this wolf, uh, decided to be my friend. Uh, let me explain. None of those wolves we could touch. It was uh, it was a big problem because uh, sometimes they would um, uh, they, they love smelly things, and when there was something smelling on the set, they would uh, rub and carry it for weeks on their fur. Uh, no way we could um, use a broom. They would eat the broom. Um, and if you do it with your hand, they would eat the hand. So they were very, very difficult animals. But that wolf, first time he saw me, uh, came crawling, very nice way, very humble, and came to me, start sniffing me, and then <laughs> went on his back and offered his um, chest. So my, my, my trainer said, well, listen, this is very unusual, but you can give him a little caress, which I did. So it did a little licking. And days after days after days of, I'm talking about pre-production, like a year before we started shooting, shooting, he was becoming more confident. And when we were shooting, we couldn't start a day without a licking session that would last uh, about 10 minutes. I don't know if you had 10 minutes of passionate lover with a wolf, but I can tell you that's quite an experience. Uh, he was about your size, and he would come like this. You know. uh, I would lick you if you know. <laughs> no, and you know, he, he used to have a perfect, uh, specific affection for my, uh, my, my cheek and, and my left ear. Uh, and it, it would, you know, go like this. And this female was impatient. For, fortunately, I was also with my wife on the shoot. Uh, my, my wife thought that uh, her name was Cl Claudie, as in French. No, no, it's Claudie, it was a male. Uh, but very uh, intensely affectionate. So I, I had assumed that, uh, but my trainer said it had nothing to do with the fact that I was um, the you know, the lead, uh, leader of, uh, of the two-legged crew. Um, no, um, my, my trainer one day said, 
You know, I think it's because he saw your movies, uh, <laughs> especially The Lover. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, no, it was very, very tender, very, uh, very unusual, very, um, very touching, and uh, uh, it's to the but point that you know the, the wolves now they are waiting for the trucks uh, to come and pick them to have another day of shooting because apparently they love the experience like uh, any actor. They they had so many. Viewers, uh, from, you know, we were 600 people on the set, and uh, only nine French people, um, and the wolves adored apparently being on the set and being applauded and uh, being looked uh, looked after. So now my trainer they said they they are like retired people. They they would like to start working again, uh, and I I hesitate to go and see see them because I'm afraid that I'll give them a, 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 the wrong signal saying hey I'm I'm back we're going to start again and. Uh, um, I, I don't like to do sequels. <laughs> what is it you made? Uh, ah, it works. Um, uh, you made more films with animals in the main role, no, right? No, 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 no. That's a coincidence. It happened uh, because years ago I did a, a movie called Quest for Fire, where I was staging very sort of primitive behavior and, and of early man. And for that movie, I researched a lot into um, animal behavior and got so interested that I decided to do a movie called The Bear, where the main role was given to an animal. And um, I, as a matter of fact, I took great pleasure to uh, be patient enough to direct a very instinctive actor. And I realized that I was learning a lot. Uh, and the movie I did after was precisely The Lover, and I know that I was I was dealing with a very young actress who had never done a movie before, and I used basically the same technique, uh, just um, work on with instincts, and let her uh, guess what she would have to do. Um, so it's a learning process for me, but I don't want to do too many of those, you know, because I've, I've on, only done three movies uh, with animal actors, but... Uh, Which some, is more than most people. What? Which is more than most people. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. But I, I also done <laughs> movies with monks, and a few people did that as well. <laughs> Can, can we uh, speak a bit about the background of the film? The film was commissioned, among others, by the Chinese film company, Corporation. It is called... Uh, how was it to work for, for a Chinese producer and, and working in China in general? Well, well listen, I, I, I must say that I, I assume that I had a very unique experience. Uh, it has been incredibly friendly. Um, Beyond my expectation, uh, I, I got great support in absolute freedom. Uh, I, I insist on the fact that it's special, but it, it, I cannot deny, I cannot say anything else than um, being supported, being let free on the screenplay. I wrote the screenplay, you four people, including me, so three uh, writers. We went through censorship in half an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm joking, three hours. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, I did the cast very freely. Uh, nobody visited me on the set, but people from Columbia Pictures who acquired the movie for the US, and uh, my producer went with them for an afternoon. Uh -huh. uh, I was left free for the editing. Um, the, the, the film, of course, has political subtext, which yeah. is no wonder because it's based on a novel that has a political subtext yeah. and has been published in the uh, People's Republic. Um, um, how did you deal with this political subtext? Were you, you know, I did anxious it. not to no. overstep the line? No. Or? I, did it, I did it to my, to, to my taste. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote the screenplay in France. Uh, very, very freely, and you know, it's a very th thick novel uh, with th th many different stories. And um, I realized uh, that they approached me because they wanted an independent I. Mm -hmm. And I, they told me, uh, they told me that they had approached a number of important uh, Chinese filmmaker who didn't feel like uh, getting into that. Uh, I've been told. I now know most of them. I never asked. Uh, I, I'm trying to be polite, so I, did, I didn't. I never asked my colleagues. 
but I have the impression that uh, they didn't know how to cope with uh, the animal aspect. They were not too sure about Mongolia as well, because Mongolia, Mongolian culture is as foreign to them as it is for, was foreign to me. Uh, you know, they, most of my Mongol actors didn't speak a word of Chinese. Uh, they didn't know Mandarin. Um, and um, I've often been told that uh, uh, they needed my voice, my free voice, because the political aspect was not going to be uh, partisan or, or biased, but uh, would be the an independent filmmaker. Um, I, I, and you know, I've been the privilege to be very, very free all my life. Um, and I think one of the reasons is if I'm not free, I just go. Um, I'm not interested anymore. So. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I insist on the fact that, you know, it's quite uh, exceptional. I was um, uh, worried, um, especially when I showed the cut, final, the final cut to the censorship. I had to wait five, five weeks and I felt something was terribly wrong. As a matter of fact, um, no, they sent me a, a lovely letter. And um, the movie you've seen uh, tonight is exactly the same that the one has been shown in China. Uh, we enjoy great success. We have 19 and a half million people that have seen it already. Uh, it's a very populated country, of course. <laughs> but it's still um, a very nice uh, result. I have Final Cut uh, on all my movies. Uh, but Final Cut, there was a mention in the contract that for China, it was depending on the uh, censorship approval. That's, that's an absolute rule in China. And I had no plan B. Um, because I've, I've shot so freely that I, I didn't even thought. And, and then this is why in these five weeks, I was starting to panic, saying, what, what am I going to do with, with you know, the, the need cuts? Because I had um, several... And did you have any ideas about what you were panicking about? or No, because it's unpredictable. Okay. Um, uh, the experience that my colleagues shared with me, uh, it can be details, it could be... And uh, a friend of mine, I was in Hong Kong like 10 days ago, and I asked a good friend of mine, Bill Kong, uh, who's the main producer, most respected, uh, one of the most respected producers in Asia. I, I said, Bill, explain to me, why is it that I had so, so much freedom? Please rem remember that I did seven years in Tibet, and I was banned in China for a long time with Brad Pitt. You know, Brad still cannot go. Um, but I, I was the one who wrote the dialogue and wrote the screenplay. Uh, <laughs> and seven years in Tibet pictures has as a background the uh, Chinese conquest of Tibet in 1950. Right, right? yes. Um, and as a matter of fact, it seems that it played in my favor because they understood that um, first they, when they approached me, they said, China, has ch which we have changed. And they also said something that <laughs> was very simple. They said, we are pragmatics people, and uh, we don't know how to do this kind, those kind of movies, uh, so we need you. And I like the simplicity of it. And they said, we need your eye, and we need your view. You can say things that we cannot say. Go ahead. And until the last, you know, I, I was lucky enough at the end of the premiere, uh, the, my, the financing party and the people from the ministry, uh, including the prime minister in front of television cameras, uh, thank me for the film. And the minister of culture said, uh, you know, don't worry about box office. It's, a, it's great. We love it. Come back anytime. Uh, and this is the first time, of course, I've heard someone putting money in one of my movies saying that box no office was no, of no importance. <laughs> Thank you. Very true. Uh, for a very simple reason, when you put uh, local music, regional music, it becomes a documentary. Uh, music is devised to talk to your heart, therefore it has to have a, a, a language that is a universal film language. This is why uh, James Horner and myself, we decided to put very little uh, Mongol music, 
which we love, uh, you may have heard some of Maureen Hoor. Maureen Hoor is this cello uh, with uh, strings made of uh, uh, the hair of a horse hair. Uh, a beautiful instrument. You may have heard also some long song. And we long songs are the sort of melody that Mongol people sing with full voice, it carries through the grassland. And you may have heard some uma, which is the uh, deep throat singing with two diphonic uh, sounds. But it's m melted in the uh, men's score. We recorded all that those songs uh, in Beijing with M Mongol uh, singers. But uh, you know, the the real reason is the one I told you. When whenever you go. including to China's audiences. Most movies are, are done on the base of classical music, even if it's... So we recorded with James Horner in, uh, with the London Symphony Orchestra in Abbey Road and Air Studio in London. When I landed for the first time in mainland China, uh, the next day I was in a four-wheel drive uh, with Zhang Rong himself, the, the main character. Uh, his story is very autobiographical. And also with the uh, other character, the character of Yanka, um, uh, the man is Mr. called Mr. Chen. And we visited the places uh, for three weeks. We went to all the places where they had the story happened, including the hall where he picked the, uh, the, the, the little puppy, uh, the places where he was building his yurt, the places where he was feeding his uh, sheep. He, he was already very, very funny. He would stop the car and say, stop, stop, stop. So he would get a, a piece of grass and say, eat that, eat that. You know, this very, very good for the sheep. Uh, th then the, the wolves know it. And, the, and then he would play the wolf uh, behind grass and show me how they were hunting. It was very, very sweet. Uh, so we, we kept, uh, we became very, very good friends after that uh, uh, expedition in, uh, in the grassland. We, you know, we had to sleep in yurts together. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, for months while I was writing the screenplay, I would call him to ask him for the details. I always told him, "This is your book. This is my film. You know, uh, uh, remember that this film is going to be different from your book." Uh, and he ag agreed with that. Um, so he gave us a lot of advices. Uh, he remembered many details that we put included in the movie, including some scenes that are in the movie that are, are not in the book but are coming from him. And um, at the end of the day, um, he gave me the best review I will ever get on a movie. He wrote a beautiful article that had been published in the Chinese press. Um, it's very unusual that a writer um, is generous enough uh, he said something very nice to me. He said, the first time I saw the movie, I was so tense. I was, it was, it was the, the writer that was looking at the movie, so I forgot to cry. So I, I, I get another screening the next day, and then it was me. And, uh, and he grabbed me. You know, it was a phenomenal, very unusual relationship with this writer. Uh, we were in a village, m most of the film have been shot in around a little di village called Wulagai. And when I'm saying village, you know, usually in China a village is about uh, 20,000 people. Uh, and a hamlet is a few thousand. Uh, here we were um, 400 kilometers from the closest air airfield uh, in a place called Xilinghotte, uh, which is a 200 thousand uh, little city and um, we were s sleeping in this place called Wulagai uh, and our sets were an hour and a half of dirt road from the place where we were uh, sleeping so um, it was really far away it was uh, by car 17 hours from uh, Beijing wow. um, and we had to do the, the travel by car very often because uh, airplanes would not. Uh, there, there, there are mountains in between Beijing and the and Mongolia, and uh, it's very very rough. So it was very tough condition, and we we stayed there for a year and a half. 
the, sh the, sh the sh shooting started in July 2012 and finished December 2013, 160 days of shooting. And of course, very, very strong, very strong winds. Uh, even in, in summer, you have to, to wear heavy clothes and uh, lots of mosquitoes. And in winter, it's, we, we shot a scene of gazelle fishing. Picking the gazelle was minus 35. Uh, still have my face burned by the, uh, the, the cold. Uh, so yes, it, it, was, it was tough, but it was so friendly. Um, you know, people were so happy to make a, a movie that was different from men's, mainstream Chinese cinema. They were very, very proud. My actors were delightful young men. Uh, this actress from Ulaanbaatar was sensational. Uh, all the Mongols were so proud that we were talking about them. Uh, in a few days, I'm going to be back because uh, I'm invited now in the Republic of Mongolia uh, because they want to promote Mongol culture. Well, you know, it's, it's a very um, positive experience for all of us. How, do, how did you manage to? Well, go, I was just saying, I've been wanting to go there for 10 years now. And uh, I guess you would recommend it, right? Uh, be, be careful with the weather uh, yeah. because, <laughs> you know, uh, my own daughter went, uh, before I shot this movie, she spent three, three uh, weeks in uh, Republic of Mongolia. She had three weeks of nonstop rain. Uh, I was lucky enough to have cold climate, a lot of wind, but not too many days of rain. But this is inner Mongolia, right? Yeah, same but it, you know, it's the same landscape, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could we talk a bit about what is by far the most spectacular sequence in the film? The, the wolves hunting the herd of, yeah. of, um, that, uh, that of horses. A, How on earth did you manage to get that on? I don't know. <laughs> no, it was tough. Uh, for many, many months before shooting that scene, I would wake up during the night uh, covered with sweat, thinking, I am entirely mad. And then I was thinking, ah, mad, yes, that's good. That's, I'm a filmmaker, I should be mad. So I would go back to bed. Uh, but yes, um, you know, the, each shot has, has to be explained separately. But uh, the main trick was to train the horses to run in a corridor with fences and to train separately wolves to run in a corridor. And then progressively, month after month, we would put them together, but protected by a fence, painted in blue. Uh, and that fence we removed later. And it took us six months to train the animal to run together. And it took us a year to remove the fence <laughs> in post-production. <laughs> but what you have is real horses with real wolves in a real snowstorm with real wind and therefore the real interaction. You know, when, when the wolves are running, I could see them. They wanted to devour the, the, the horses. They were like this with intensity in their eyes. And with several cameras, I would have different angles. Same for the horses. They, 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 they were freaking out. And you could see in their face. So you have realism. You have the intensity of real action. And for the aerial shots, I use a drone, but separately for the horses first, and then a very high crane uh, to match with the choreography of the horses with wolves, who themselves were um, choreographed by their uh, trainers on horseback. The trainers were on horses pay, uh, uh, with a blue costume, then I could remove them later on. But, also, but, but it's real horses, real wolves, on uh, real Mongolia, running in a huge uh, area that we had to fence because wolves had one idea was to run away and attack some sheep in the distance. So we had to put um, fences uh, four up to five meters high and also uh, we had to dig in the, uh, in the ground a, a meter and a half because they, you know, they, they dig holes. And that was my main, main fear. Of course, I had the fear that wolf would attack my actors, would attack my crew. Uh, but I was very, very worried about a wolf escaping and, and getting right away attacking some, some herd and getting killed in return. Um, so, so, you know, it was... Now, when, when you see 
a wolf jumping on the neck of a horse. Of course, it's a fake horse, but it's, real, it's a real wolf. Why is he attacking this? Because we train him to do so uh, with a simple trick. We uh, put some uh, meat juice, sausage juice, as a, as a matter of fact, on, on, on the hair. And under the fake skin of the fake horse, we put a nice piece of steak. So the wolf would go, and I have a minute of fury. Yeah. So, so if you edit this properly with the same soundtrack, the uh, horse winning, and to win, have a horse winning, you just do a close up, uh, and with a trainer, with a stick, the, the horse would, you know, uh, get, get the proper reaction. And then when you see a, a wolf being kicked, of course, it's not a real wolf. It's a, it's, it's a very expensive puppet called animatronic that was devised for that moment. And then when you see a, a wolf pretending that he is wounded, as a matter of not that at all. It's again some uh, meat juice on the snow uh, mixed with a very colorful strawberry uh, jam. Uh, but it gives a nice impression of, uh, of blood and, and, and the wolves that th this. And if you, instead of having, if you w go, <coughs> you've got a different scene, and this is how it works. <laughs> the, uh, it has now become customary, in, 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 uh, especially in American movies, to uh, as soon as one mouse appears in a film, to have a line in the credits saying that no harm got, no, no animal got harmed during the making of this movie. Sure. Could you say the same thing about your movie? Fortunately, yes, yes. Uh, we, you know, uh, I, I had a, a, a trainer who was in charge of safety. Uh, this man is the most famous uh, dog and hyena and fox trainer and wolf trainer in, in, in America. Um, if one animal got hurt, he'd lose his job forever. So um, it's why I just gave him, and I, I had to explain to my Chinese crew that we were making, uh, making it different. Uh, that we should treat uh, animal actors the same way that we are treating uh, the uh, two-legged actors. And we, and we did. Uh, we, we built special wrenches for the wolf, four of them. Each uh, was costing $100,000, uh, each wrench, uh, because we, we had for each wolf a sleeping area, a eating area, private toilets, and uh, <laughs> almost, almost, and and also uh, a, a, a playground, and then a rehearsing ground, uh, the huge areas uh, that we ha and we had to have guards all night long and all day long w with weapons, because the uh, a lot of uh, people around uh, wanted to get to steal the wolves, because they wanted to reinforce the, the, species, uh, the race of their uh, animals. They wanted to have stronger dogs. And we had to protect our wolves. So, so you know, it was a very, very complicated uh, thing. And we had to devise special trucks to carry them. Not, not only because we love animals, but, but because if you get an actor that is upset on your set, either Brad Pitt or Sean Connery, doesn't matter, or a wolf. If he, he didn't sleep well, he doesn't perform well. So this is why we, we cuddle actors, we love them, we want them to be well fed, we give them flowers, uh, just to make sure that they work properly. And this is what we did with our wolves. First, I have to get the, the, the trust of those wolves. Because usually, you know, a, a wolf is a very cautious animal. And it doesn't do what you want. If you whistle uh, to a dog, the dog will run and come. If you whistle, the wolf would run away uh, and disappear and hide for a, a day. Uh, so you had to make sure that they would come. And then when they're in the right position, you have to invent a solution where they will get the right expression for you. For instance, if, if I want them to be surprised, well, when they're in the right position, I would have hidden a camel in the distance behind a, under a tent. And then I would roll the camera 
pull the tent, and then they see a camel. <laughs> so I have like 10 seconds. And, and they look at each other, you say, fuck, what the fuck is this, you know? <laughs> Don't expect a second take. So usually we did this movie always with first take, but first take would take us a day. So this is why it took us 160 days, because you can't fake. Unfortunately, I, I cannot say to my alpha wolf, please tell your friends to be, to be surprised, you know? Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes you say that to actors, they don't do it anyway. Uh, so with wolf, you really, uh, with any animal, you have to create the situation where they would react accordingly. When, 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 you know, when they dribble, for instance, when they have saliva, well, what, what we did is we, we showed them a nice piece of, uh, of meat, and then we removed the piece of meat. And then, <laughs> and then they, they couldn't stand. They went, you know, it was very touching. They were, they, they, their mouth was watering. Uh, so you just have to be patient and, and, and do and trust your trainer, who himself has to be trusted by the wolves. Uh, but it's a very long process. It took us three years to get them uh, in this. Uh, Condition. Yeah, thank you. Actually, I followed the act actor, the main actor, uh, he's uh, the Chinese Facebook. I see he was, has been like really long time that he was posting he's in the in Mongolia taking this last, the last wolf. So it was like waiting for all the scenes or capture the expressions of the wolf. So it was like always expecting really high expectation. Thank you so much. It's very difficult uh, with uh, Chinese accounting, to be sure. <laughs> uh, 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 they have declared uh, in some press release that it costed $90 million, but no. Uh, it, costed, uh, it cost about 40, um, 40 to 45. Um, I worked with the uh, China Film Group. And f for instance, uh, the, you know, the movie is released also in, uh, in 3D in some, in some countries. I shot a third of it in 3D. Um, for the shots that were not in 3D, that were re-dimensionalized, I realized that uh, 2,000 people have been working f on, the, on the case for a year. Uh, how much did they cost? Well, if it would be in America, it would be about $10 million. Uh, I know it uh, officially costs only 800000 for the redimensionalization. So I frankly don't know. What I can tell you is that they, there was a desire to, to make this film different from what they produced. They wanted very, very high quality. They wanted to show that in China, in Beijing, we could achieve um, top quality. And... Um, they gave me what I requested. You never had to worry about production costs? Not really. Right? <laughs> can, I, can I ask one final question myself? Uh, we, we talked about politics, and we talked about um, uh, how, how the movie was made, etc. It is also a film with several messages on a political level, an ecological level, or whatever. What, what from your point of view, is the, the tendency, the message the morals of the film, well, you if, know, there, if there is one. When I was approached, um, um, nobody talked freely about uh, the environmental problems in China. Uh, and basically, uh, they said to me, there are things we cannot say, but you could. So go, go ahead with what you feel. Um, so I did. And uh, this is why I had no problem with censorship, because I was given the freedom uh, to publicly uh, say that something has to be done uh, with uh, nature. And you probably have noticed that in the recent weeks, months, there was a lot of uh, press uh, in China, uh, because it has been reported in uh, Western press that um, including a recent TV show, very, very strong on ecological problems in China, that has been not only authorized, but uh, the, the uh, government uh, congratulated the person who was a t famous TV host who did it. So, so you know, there is a shift. Uh, of course, we all know how long it took us in our countries to uh, make uh, 
f factories that were cleaner. And basically, we lost uh, we lost the factory uh, because they went to countries where we, you could put the dirt in the air and in the river. Uh, so it's not easy for China. I, I, you know, they're moving the. They are planning to move the big uh, uh, powerhouses from, from Beijing to other more distant places. So it will take time, but uh, now it's, it's becoming very official. For it. While I was there, uh, already in the newspaper, you could see pictures in the front page of people going home looking at their uh, smartphone because they couldn't find their home because it was so polluted. I, I, I went through that in Beijing. Sometimes I, I open. My, my curtain, I couldn't see the, uh, the, the street. It was so polluted. So, so you know, it's, uh, it's becoming a, a, one of the problems that has to be ta uh, taken into consideration. The uh, people uh, from China here, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, they know that their parents try to immigrate uh, just to breathe. Uh, a lot of my friends are calling me now and saying I cannot uh, take my child to the uh, to sport, uh, I cannot walk in the street. Uh, it's, a, it's a serious, serious problem. So, of course, the, this message is very important. And I must tell you that um, uh, I was very, very touched to be um, asked to be part of the debate and to give my, my voice. Uh, I, I know that one movie is not sufficient, of course. But uh, I'm happy also that uh, uh, people went to see the movie and uh, they all feel that they have to do something personal to uh, make the beautiful nature that remains in China uh, safe for the rest of uh, the centuries. Thank you very much. Thank you for a wonderful film. And for all of you, have a nice festival.